Hello, my name is Ardi and we are going to solve problem 4.40 from Nielsen and Riedel book. So the question is, use the mass current method to find the power delivered by the dependent voltage source in circuit seen in figure P.40. Okay, this is the figure and because we are asked to use mass current method, so let's draw the mass. So let's name this as I1. Let's name this here as I2. And let's name this here as I3. And here we also have a dependent voltage source which is depend on I5. But here we know that I5 is I2 minus I3, right? Because I2 is flowing to the same direction and I3 flowing to the opposite direction. So we will have, note here, I5, I5 is equal to I2 minus I3. Okay, and now let's do KVL at loop I1, KVL at loop I2, and then KVL at loop I3. Okay, let's do the first KVL here. Let's do KVL at loop i1 kvl said that the sum of the voltage in a loop will be equal to zero we just have to be careful with the sign here so in the loop i1 in this voltage source the current is flowing from the negative side to the positive side so the sign will be negative so we have minus and i will have 660 its magnitude and then plus the second component here is 5. And the only current that pass through it is I1. Okay, and then another component is this 15 ohm. So I'll have 15. And currently we are working on I1. So I1 came first. But then I3 is flowing to the opposite direction of I1 in this component. So minus I3. Good, and then for the last component, I will have this 10. And similar to previous, because we are currently working on I1, so we'll have I1 here. But then here, I2 is flowing to the opposite direction. So I will have minus I2. And all of that will equal to 0. Let's put this minus 660 to the right hand side. And let's work on this, right? For I1, I will have 5 plus 15, which is 20. And then 20 plus 10, I will have 30 I1. And I2 only came from here, so we will have minus 10 I2. And I3 only came here, so I will have minus 15 I3. All of that will equal to 660 which is equation number one. Good. Now, let's do another KVL, but this time at loop I2. Let's do that. KVL at loop I2. KVL said that the sum of the voltage in a loop will equal to zero. <clears throat> okay, let's start from this part here. I will have minus sign because i2 is flowing from the negative side to positive side so we'll have minus 20 multiplied by i5 right because that is the magnitude of this dependent voltage source and then plus i will have 10 but here currently i'm working on i2 so i2 came first and then i1 is flowing to the opposite direction so i'll have minus i1 and then for the same logic, I will have 50 multiplied by I2. But here I will have I3 flowing to the opposite direction. So I'll have minus I3. Good. And all of that will equal to 0. Okay, now maybe let's do some substitution here. So I5 is I2 minus I3. So I will have minus 20. Let's apply that. So I'll have I2 minus i3 and then plus 10 i2 minus i1 
and then plus 50 I2 minus I3. All of that will equal to 0. Okay, let's do some a little arithmetic here. I1 only came from here. So I will have minus 10 I1. And then I2 came from all the places. So I will have minus 20 plus 10, which is minus 10. And then minus 10 plus 50, that will be plus 40. Plus 40 I2. Oh, this is not I2, but I1. And then I3 is coming from two places, right? This and that. Minus 20 and minus 1 becomes plus 20. So I'll have plus 20 plus 50. No, plus 20 minus 50. 20 minus 50 is minus 30. So I will have I3 here. All of that will equal to 0. Okay, maybe let's save this as equation number 2. Okay, now for the last equation, let's do KVL, but this time at loop I3. KVL at loop I3. KVL said that the sum of the voltage in a loop will equal to 0. Okay, let's start by this 25 voltage. So, I mean 25 resistor, so we have 25. And then the only current that passed through it is I3. And then let's move on to that 50. But this time we are working on I3. So I3 came first. But here I2 is flowing to the opposite direction. So minus I2. And then with the same logic, I will have 15 multiplied by I3. But here I1 is flowing to the opposite direction. All of that will equal to 0. Now let's inspect this. I1 only came from here. So I will have minus 15 I1. And then I2 only came from here. So I will have minus 50 I2. And then I will have I3. 25 plus 50 is 75. 75 plus 15 is 90. I will have plus 90 I3. All of that will equal to 0. So this is equation number 3. Okay, we have 3 equations with 3 variables. We should be able to solve this. And I'm gonna use calculator. So let's set up our calculator as equation solver, which is number 5. 3 variables is number 2 and let's plug in the coefficient. So I'll have 30 and then minus 10 and then minus 15 and then 660 and then this one I will have minus 10 and then 40 and then minus 30. And then all of that equal to 0. And for the last equation, I will have minus 15. And then minus 50. And then 90. And then 0. Okay, I will have I1 is equal to 42 ampere. Okay, so we'll have I1 is equal to 42 ampere. And then what is I2? I2 is the Y value, which is 27 ampere. 27 ampere. And then I3 is the Z value, which is 22 ampere. 22 ampere. But we are asked about the power. But remember, power is just the voltage multiplied by the current. The current is I2. Okay, but the voltage is 20 I5. So I will have 20 I5 multiplied by I2. And I5 is I2 minus I3. So I'll have 20 I2 minus I3. 
multiplied by I2. And I2 is 27. Okay, and then what is I3? 3 is 22. Then multiplied by I2 again, that is 27. So I will have 20. This is 5. So I'll have 20 multiplied by 5. And then by 27. Okay. This is P. So therefore the final answer is 20 times 5 is 100. So I will have this one. 2700 watt. And I think that is the final answer for this question. Let's highlight this answer. Okay, I think that's all for this problem. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.